for men, estrogen is becoming a serious thing that we need to be concerned with. Not something we need to be freaked out about, but we need to be paying attention to it. The scientific literature is starting to point to estrogen as being the potential culprit for a number of different things in men. So we're gonna talk about the dangers of higher levels of estrogen. And I wanna open with a study that was pretty darn interesting when it comes down to estrogen and depression. This is wild stuff. This study was published in the journal Psychoneuroendocrinology, and it took a look at 3,925 men, okay? And it wanted to get a better understanding of why there's typically this link between obesity and depression. So what they did is they measured their BMI, they measured their sex hormones, so things like estrogen, things like testosterone, and they measured that with the correlation with depression, okay? Very interesting findings with this. One thing that wasn't unbelievably surprising was that they found that there was a higher link between obesity and low levels of testosterone. Okay, we've kind of seen that before. No real surprise there, but still very, very important to note. But then they saw some other stuff. They found that significantly higher estrogen levels only seemed to occur in overweight and obese people that were over the age of 60, where their testosterone levels were also starting to decline a lot. But beyond that, they noticed that there was a very strong correlation between high levels of estradiol, estrogen, and depressive symptomology in all men, regardless of age and BMI. Wow, okay, so saying that again, a higher levels of estrogen seemed to correlate with more depression, regardless of any kind of weight. And they also noticed that with estrogen to testosterone ratio. So the higher the estrogen and the lower the testosterone, the more depressive symptomology they noticed, which really kind of affirms an earlier study that was published in the journal Aging Male. This study positively correlated estradiol with once again, depression and once again, looked at the ratio of estrogen to testosterone. That's not to say that testosterone isn't very, very important to pay attention to, but perhaps we need to be looking at that testosterone to estrogen ratio a little bit more. Now, for men, if you're not going out and getting blood work tested, you can look in the mirror and if you start noticing, hey, like I'm actually developing breast tissue or I'm getting a lot of fat around the chest, it's something to actually think about because that's really a visual indicator that maybe estrogen levels are getting pretty darn high and it might be something that you wanna check out. So men generally produce like two main kinds of estrogen, estrone and estradiol. We're focusing heavily on estradiol in this video. And just so you have some context, the Endocrine Society suggests that the average male should have between 10 and 40 picograms per milliliter of estrogen. There's a number of reasons as to why these estrogen levels could be higher, and a lot of times we do see it high. We see it very high in men these days, and it's something that we need to be paying attention to. Uh, for one, higher levels of adipose tissue. Okay, adipose tissue secretes estrogen. So the more fat you have, the more estrogen you produce. Insulin plays a big role too. If you're insulin resistant, that plays a tremendous role on the metabolization and also the formation of estrogen. And then alcohol consumption is a huge piece too because alcohol induces some of the estrogen production but also reduces the body's ability to metabolize the estrogens, like the 1,7-hydroxyestradiol that we need to metabolize and get rid of. So there's this thing in the body called the estrobilome. It's part of the microbiome and it aids in the metabolism of estrogens. So the diversity of our microbiome plays a role in how estrogens are processed within the body, influencing the 2-hydroxyestrogen ratio to the 1,6-hydroxyestrogen ratio, so good versus bad estrogen. So having a more diverse microbiome is important, and probiotics do potentially play a role there. So people ask me a lot, do probiotics influence this? And you can't say with certainty with a probiotic per se, but gut microbiome diversity, yeah, it does have a positive effect. The probiotic that I would recommend is actually a symbiotic. It's called seed, and they're interesting because they have a prebiotic and a probiotic in one, hence the word symbiotic. And they're unique because A, they fund a bunch of microbiome research, which just deserves credit, but B, they have a capsule inside of a capsule. Now, what this does is normally if you take a probiotic, it's getting destroyed in the hydrochloric acid rich environment of your gut. 
But with seed, they have an interesting staging system with the capsule inside of a capsule. So one part breaks down here and another part breaks down there. So you have this potential utilization in the right places. So making it very unique. So there's a 15% off link down below if you wanna try seed, which personally, I think that you really should. I highly recommend it because it's one of those things that you can just add into your life that might just make a huge impact. And it's a pretty easy lever to pull to really figure out if it's working for you or not. So that link is down below in the description again to save 15% off seed, which is pretty much the only probiotic that I put my stamp of approval on these days. Speaking of testosterone, that is one of the reasons why estrogen can get so high. Remember, testosterone will aromatize into estrogen. Okay, so if there's imbalances there, then you can end up with an even further imbalance as testosterone can turn into estrogen. And then once that happens, estrogen can actually limit testosterone production. So it's a vicious cycle. But estrogen exerts effects outside of just the whole testosterone continuum. There was a study that was published in the International Journal of Impotence Research. Okay, and this looked at independently of testosterone, estrogen played a role in terms of erectile dysfunction. So this is one of the dangers of having high levels of estrogen. Estrogen can affect what is called vascular permeability okay, via what's called vascular endothelial growth factor. So basically it's making the vessels more permeable. So that blood vessel, that's very important when it comes down to an erection, is not holding the blood as well, which means the blood is dissipating out and do the math, okay? So a huge issue there. Now, second to that, it can play a very powerful role in terms of infertility. Now, this may not be of interest to you right at this very moment. Maybe you're not looking to start a family, but at some point, maybe you are. And it's something that really contributes subconsciously as a guy to like our manhood. Something's very important, right? Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Scientific Reports that took a look at testes tissue that had come from testes that were removed from transgender individuals that had gone through one to six years of estrogen therapy. Okay, so essentially this was testicle tissue that had been affected heavily by estrogen. And they compared that to testicle tissues, testes tissue that was from unaltered, okay, totally unaltered with no hormonal influence. They found some interesting things. They found that estrogen had reduced the diameter of the seminiferous tubes within the testes. Now, those are the tubules in which sperm is produced. Okay. They also found that there was sort of an alteration and sort of glycoproteins that were in the Leydig cells. So meaning that estrogen was also affecting the formation of testosterone, which is really, really interesting. Not to mention there is an effect on the cells that release the germ cells that produce sperm or precursors to sperm. Basically there are these vacuoles in it where immature germ cells would release. So meaning even if you had sperm, it was not active. So you were kind of, sh you weren't shooting blanks per se, you were shooting like rubber bullets. But let's move on to something that you might be experiencing. Another danger of having high levels of estrogen that maybe you haven't connected the dots with are migraines. So a lot of times when you look at the data, the observational and just epidemiological data, you see like women tend to suffer from migraines quite a bit more than men. So that kind of leads us to think, well, it must have something to do with hormones, like, right, maybe estrogen. So, well, to uncover that a little bit more, you have to look at some research that looks at men. Now, this study was very intriguing. So this study was published in the journal Neurology. It took a look at 17 non-obese men that would have migraines at least three times per week, okay? Compared that to 22 non-obese men that didn't deal with migraines. And it looked at 1,7 beta estradiol, so estrogen levels and testosterone and the correlation with this. So what they did is they drew their blood on days that they were not having migraines, and then they tested their blood every day until they had a migraine. Well, guess what they discovered? Testosterone levels didn't seem to play too much of a role directly, but the estrogen to testosterone ratio did. Those that had the migraines had significantly higher estrogen levels on the days leading up to their migraines. We're talking like a 30 point difference too, a pretty significant difference and a pretty significant ratio change between estrogen and testosterone. So those that didn't have the migraines didn't seem to have these increases in estrogen. Now correlation doesn't equal causation, but this is definitely grounds for further research to be done to understand the mechanism here, especially when we look backwards at a lot of the observational stuff with women and migraines. Now when it comes down to fat accumulation, when it comes down to these other pieces that are a little bit more cosmetic, we have to remember that too. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, 
Testosterone, estrogen play a role in where we store fat, how we store fat, and the vicious cycle that it can start. Okay, so we're starting to see this decline in testosterone levels, right? Well, are things directly affecting testosterone in our lives? Or are things influencing higher levels of estrogen that are indirectly affecting the levels of testosterone? That's what we have to look at, because the higher the body fat percentage, the more estrogen. Okay? The higher the insulin resistance, the more estrogen. And that starts a vicious circle. But which came first, the chicken or the egg? You have to understand your numbers and know where you stand and get these things in check if you ever want to be able to stop that vicious cycle and make the lifestyle changes that you're really setting out to have. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.